Howdy fellas, Frankie Day here. Okay guys, uh, this is Saturday evening, it'll be double feature night. And uh, video number one is going to be update build report number 12 for my Trumpeter 1200 scale USS Arizona. Okay fellas, thus far taken from the last uh, video, which is 11, I went, I went ahead and, and kept on working on this thing. To me, it's like a dog with a bone, I'm not going to let go on it. So. It's, uh, it's getting there, fellas. Uh, so far in the construction, I got all the fire control stations that have been painted out already. I got all the uh, photo etch railings are on. They're installed on the uh, fire control stations. They've been primed and painted uh, 5S dark sea blue along with pale gray. And uh, I also put the um, the lead the, the Leadman's uh, Leaving also boat davits for the uh, boat booms have been installed, <clears throat> and I went back and did some uh, wild dusting on it and everything. Make sure it got all dust free. So I got pretty well dust free, folks. So these little uh, these little bus brushes, they, they, they're a, they're a must. They do a good job. You know, I'm really uh, I'm very happy with this. I'm, I'm, and, uh, I'd like to thank you again, Mr. Gary, for these bus brushes. I'm honored to you, dear sir. Thank you, buddy. Okay, back to the Arizona, of course. Okay, guys. Uh, all that's left on it is do the railings, rigging, construction and painting, installation of the two OS2U Kingfishers with the kit gave you, and uh, the rigging and uh, add the flags. And lastly, paint the crew figures. I'm going to put the figures on just for Bunker Bill. And I know he likes his figures, and uh, I'm getting to like them too. So they do add a little life and spice and scale to the ship. But uh, I've got the fittings. Uh, the fittings here, folks, here, um, these little sailors they gave me. They gave me two packets <clears throat> to the kit. I think uh, put the cigar down for him. Put an ash in my pocket somewhere. Each one of these baggies contains the two sprues, and these two sprues have have uh, enlisted men and officers figures on here, all the scale of one two hundred, and uh, they they look pretty much right on. And uh, there's one thing good about trumpeters. There's lots of supplementary parts that you can buy for this uh, the USS Arizona. There's there's detailing set, contains a photo which reeling frets extra these crew figures and other things too it's a pity though they already they already got you fished in for three hundred dollars for the kit and you gotta dish out another three or four hundred just for to max it out well those accessories are very good to have folks if you're only building it for museum purposes only if it's going to be in a museum where people can gather at it and, and uh discern with their eyes and to see all the detail that it incorporates that's good for that that's the only time I'll do something like that like a little show model if the aftermarket parts out there are not available it saves me the pains of making it myself up for that but out of the box that's good enough for Frankie Day okay guys we'll come over here and take a look at the Arizona and uh, I got my famous pointer finger over here and he's going to help me out a lot. And we'll take the camera swing over here and I'll discuss what I've done on it. And after the, after the, uh, the viewing of the Arizona, I'll swing the camera around hard to support. And um, you just truly will finish the video. And the next one, you'll like the next video I'm going to have for you. It's going to be a surprise. Okay, guys, back to the Arizona. As we slowly take the camera, it's very friendly as it is. Here she is in her entirety. I've got it all cleaned off and everything on here, folks. And uh, I've got all the rail works done on the fire control stations. And we're going to take a nice little close view of that if the camera would be friendly enough to let me do it. And uh, kind of zoom in a little bit. There's right there, folks. I got the fire control stations all done. And I've got the outriggers right here. They're all done. And uh, let me change pointers over here, folks. They got the, all the outriggers are all done. They're all photo etched, get it spied. All the rigging will go down to the flag locker. 
and the flag locker will hook up to the flag bag. And uh, you can see the chalking effect of the, of the sea blue. Of the sea blue and the separation from the pale gray. That was known as a measure, that was called measure, measure one 5D. But when the, when, the, when the USS Arizona collided with the USS Oklahoma, I thought it was Nevada, folks, but I was wrong. During, during wartime maneuvers, it was a very foggy day out there in Honolulu, right off the, uh, the lock as it goes into the harbor. Uh, radar was very much in its infancy today, and this ship was not fitted with radar, so they had, you had forecastle watches, and the forecastle had a 1MC, which is a wiring system that goes up to the bridge, until we got, the, we got a battleship bearing down right on, right on our point of our bow. So, the USS uh, Oklahoma came over and punched a hole right over, right over here in this area here. Pun punched a hole right there. And uh, they put a patch on it, supposed to send it back to Bremerton, Washington. But on orders of Operation Rainbow Number 5, Admiral Kimmel wanted his battle line painted with the new 5S. And uh, that, that's the dark sea blue. Also with uh, pale gray upper chalking of the fire control stations and the divisions had their turrets painted uh, different colors. That's why it's called Rainbow Five color-coded war plans. You can see how the turrets are on there. This is the division that it belongs into. It's actually identification for aerial views only. The note division this aircraft this uh, battleship's from. Okay, we go aft folks. You can see the same thing I've done aft. I've got the fire control stations all painted. You can see the separation of from the pale gray, from the five best dark sea blue. I got the 24-inch signal lights on here. I'll use the 32-inch, 36-inch uh, signal lights. I got 36-inch, uh, three-foot uh, signal lights have been installed. I got the lens installed. They showed a little reflection once while the light hits it. I've got all the railings done on it, and we'll swing around a little bit if it's, if it's cameras friendly. You can see how I got all the uh, the pet work done on the, the railings. I got the fort, uh, the 36 inch uh, searchlights are done on there. You can see the ladderways as they go up to the to the fire control stations. A lot of you fellas uh, know in Arizona, especially on the Ravel kit, you got a clock on there. You got a clock forward and a clock aft. That right clock right there pulls a time you how much how much longer does it take you to set that gun. Because you got your your fire control station up here, you got the you got the these acts like gun directors. You've got personnel inside these little houses right here. This is a three-story house right here on top of this tripod mast, and you got your you got your crew up there with binoculars gauging how far from the subject they're going to bombard with the shells. And so with a clock right there. It adds, uh, it's a timing measure. It, you, it allows you how much time there is to take for you to take that turret and rotate it and have it trained in, in position. So when that's done, when, that, when it's done in that manner right there, fellas, it's, um, that's how it's done. Then they found out that they, did, they, they no longer needed, needed it. It was actually was a waste of time more than anything because during war, if, if, when war was pretty intimate at the time, uh, all the uh, the, fire, the gun directing can be done by the fire control stations, fore and aft. Yeah, you can see how she looks, folks. She's coming along pretty good. So, what I did on this thing, folks, I went ahead, like I said earlier in this video, I went ahead and I primed the fire control stations, I glued the bridge up top to the O1 level, and I masked off using Tamiya masking tape, the separation from the... Um, the pale gray, and also the sea blue. The same thing was done at. And I got the searchlights all installed. And also I got these little davits right here. These little davits right here. They, I'll zoom in a little bit, fellas, so you can take a better look at it. Uh oh, it's going the wrong way, Frankie. There you be. Right over here. These little davits right here. These davits right here are actually davits for your boat booms. When your boat booms will swing out this way, and that davit right there 
will give it support. And you got your your foot you got your foot ropes underneath your underneath your boot boom and you got a Jacob's ladder that comes on top of your boot your boat boom into the to your to the jolly boat. That's for, for faster uh, deployment and also depart on uh, and going aboard and going for liberty call is used. And uh you can see it here too, folks. Those are davits right there. Davits for your combination ladder and also for your boot booms. You got one for your, for your aft back there. And also forward over here is your combination ladder. And of course, you got one right here. That's for your quarter deck right there. And I don't try to shake this camera too much, folks folks so I got railing work I gotta do starting forward and working all the way aft the rails are got to be done on they got to be painted first and, all, and uh, installed and the rail works on top of the um, the boat deck which is the casement deck you got to have railings all through here too we're adjacent to the splinter shields and the same thing aft too on the aft part of the ship you got to have also, I've got to have my rail works done here also as well. And other than that, folks, and uh, they had the rigging, the flags, uh, construct the um, the two float planes, and uh, should be ready to go. And back this camera out, folks. A little bit too uh, too close. Anyway, I try to operate this monitor in the ship at the same time. It's kind of hard for Frankie Day because I sometimes I get uncoordinated. I'm not as good as you fellows out there are. I gotta get my videos going better. I've been saying this for a while, guys. And I gotta really uh, get my videos all shake up, make better videos. It takes it easy on me, no matter regardless how much long it takes me to do it. Okay, fellows. Um, that concludes uh, video number 12 for my uh, USS Arizona by Trumpeter. And uh, we'll take another look at it again here before I turn the camera over to your truly so you fellas can take a look at it. It's a beautiful ship, folks. It's a shame that something like this uh, was destroyed. And the, and the poor sailors, boy, I tell you, nothing in the world is worse than being killed in your sleep. And... Uh, from my understanding, we got a million pounds of ammunition in this thing. Most of the people were either, either they were, either less, the, 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 most of the crew was either incinerated or vaporized, which probably means the same thing. And so they saw it coming, and after that, that was it for them. And, um,. Everybody else suffered burns. Most of the casualties on this here ship, they, they suffered from burns, you know, and and the heat was so intense. And the Admiral Kidd was the uh, the, the was in charge of the uh, of the of the fleet at Pearl Harbor, along with Admiral Kimmel. And this was his flagship. And all was left of Captain Kidd, Admiral Kidd was his uh, his Annapolis officers' ring. It was welded inside the bulwarks. That was all left to him. So I imagine he was incinerated immediately, or either that or vaporized. And uh, we got a lot of uh, a lot of fellows died in this thing, and and uh, very very sad way for a sailor to go down and die. But uh, you got a lot of you got a lot of those uh, Arizona sailors that that served back in World War II are very very dedicated to their ship, and uh, they wanted their ashes spelt all over the the water inside the Arizona that I complete the, the, the crew's uh, list and uh, the Arizona was a, was a nice home for a lot of sailors because you got to realize that was back in the 1930s and um, the 20s uh, we're living in the depression back then there was no jobs to be found and the, any, any enthusiastic young man that graduated from high school that wanted to make something out of himself had no job. Even some had no homes. Some had no mother and fathers, no homes. They had enough smarts to go to the boot camp and everything. And they 
and they uh, reported the duty on the USS Arizona. A lot of them were on there for years. There were some sailors on there for 12 to 15 years that were on the ship. That was their home. That was their residence for, for life. And uh, Pearl Harbor changed all that, but right after World War II, they had a lot of... Um, there weren't very many rotating uh, uh, rotating uh, duty stations back in those days. Back during the Korean War, 1950s, no crew member was allowed to stay aboard the ship any longer than a year. And they just rotated his next uh, tour of duty. And uh, that explains why I had a lot of ships. But if I had a nice ship that I've, I really enjoyed the most, I'd stay on until I got out of the Navy. But that's how these sailors were back in those days. All these sailors here, they were, it was their home because they had nowhere to go to. No mother, no father, no family. The Navy was their family, and that's all they had. And uh, so that's why a lot of uh, Arizona sailors and all the, the battle line sailors there, battleship sailors, these guys are very dedicated to their battleships. And the battleships were the queen of the sea until Osuria Yamato has said, uh, the aircraft carrier is the king, the queen and king now. So during World War II, <coughs> excuse me, fellas, that the battleships were more or less known as was good for uh, shore bombardment only. Okay, guys, uh, well, I'm going to swing the camera to yours truly, and, uh, and uh, since I'm here, well, swing the camera, my eye will keep it here where it's at. I don't want to devil my pleasure. Okay, boys, uh, the next video. It's going to be a treat. It's a treat to me, and I'll explain how I got it. And uh, another one for the stash pile. So stay tuned for video number two. This concludes uh, video number 12. The number 13 uh, video will come up, will be the rail works. I should have all the railings done. And uh, the next video for this will be probably um, Tuesday. By this Tuesday, I should have all the railings done in this here ship. It should be all finished. And um, I'll have the float planes all done and installed too. And the last thing I'll be doing on it, I'll be doing the rigging. And uh, add the crew figures and prepare the dust cover. Get the nice stand. Take her and mount her on there and she's done. Okay guys, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in and may God bless. And thank you very much for viewing my videos. I'm very honored to each one of you great fellas out there. And uh, I'm sorry I haven't uh, been uh, commenting back to you guys' comments on my last video, number 11. I've been too busy in this thing. So, after I get the other video uploaded to after this here, I'm going to go back and comment on my on my comment out there. Keep you fellas and keep you guys on your toes. Me too. Okay, guys, keep Mama happy, and uh, God bless you guys. Love you guys very much, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video. So stay tuned for video number two for Devil Feature Saturday, and uh, this, this can be a treat. I think you'll like it. I know I do, because I like it. Okay, guys, I'm out of here. We'll catch you guys in the next uh, video. Bye, boys.